from OLN's very successful program. People get addicted to your show. I can count myself as one of them. Because <laughs> you love to see people seek out a great deal. That's right. And then get that little item that they want so badly and how they can parlay that into a little profit. So talk us through season one and two in how the liquidator sort of came to be and uh, a preview of season three. Well, season one and two, I mean, I never thought that we'd be going into season three, so, and I didn't think anybody would actually like it, but, I mean, what makes the show unique is that uh, there's no scripting, and everybody is out there looking for a deal, and they're actually, actually coming into the store, and these are real people, and everybody's got a crazy story. And so when they see a guy like me, they're, we're all sort of similar. So it's 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 kind of quirky. So it's kind of like um, there are other shows out there that kind of I guess began with the Antiques Roadshow, which was people bringing the things in and you know discussing what the heritage might be. You really go digging through how much stuff to find gold. Well, <laughs> it's funny they said that if a if a buyer is out there buying and he's winning on ten out of ten, I mean he's doing really well. But I I would disagree. I think you know what? In order to get somewhere, you got to actually take a few hits before you actually make it. So. Um, we're continuously looking and we're always looking and you know it's not just us it's other people out there hey you know what I know Jeff he'll look at that you know right. so it's sort of that network and then trying to get into that network is, is sort of the hardest part so get into the club yeah. okay so tell us um, two I'm so curious about this number one what is the thing that you thought had value what did you pay for it and then realized it didn't do you have one like wah wah <laughs> Well, uh, season one, uh, we did. I, I bought some noodles, and uh, when they showed up, uh, the camera crew was there, and I was all excited. The guy was all excited, and the next thing you know, uh, we got the noodles. I paid the guy for the noodles, and I, as he's leaving, I'm looking at the noodles. I'm going like, they got six days left. I have expiry. Yeah, and I've got like eleven thousand of these things. So oh, that was a bad one for camera. But there's uh, been other ones that uh, have gone the other way. I bought a bunch of suits once that were all wrong sizes. Oh. So. And what was your greatest triumph to date? that you can tell us, because you can't tell us the greatest triumph from season three yet, can you? Well, there was a really good one on season three. Yeah, and, uh, let me, uh, Well, let me just say that there's a lot of people in British Columbia that uh, have some great tomato farms, maybe in their garages or warehouses or basements, and mm -hmm. something about licenses and all that stuff. But I didn't really get into that part, but I can tell you it uh, turned out to be very shocking. Saucy. Oh, uh, yes. Interesting. And uh, the oddest thing that you've ever moved? <laughs> What's the right word? Geez, I don't know where to start. But again, in season three, we got uh, one of those, and uh, the guy that bought it was just as odd as the product that we sold him. So it was. Uh, Do you often get the stories behind what people are buying? Is that, you know? Part of the fun for you, or is it just the art of the deal? Do you know, yeah, yeah it's 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 a, it's a big part of it because I mean, if you're buying something that's eclectic, you kind of want to know who owned it or where it came from. And, right. You know, it's got a little bit of history to it, so you, it's, it it helps actually sell the stuff. You know, like a piece of Elvis's guitar or something right. like that. But who owned that before? But yeah, we try, and I mean, a lot of times you don't want to hear the story too because it's not always the best story to hear. Kind of be quir quirky. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's garage sale season, obviously. Yeah. I'm going to have a garage sale. Lots of people getting ready to sell their stuff. Piece of advice for those who are going to sell their treasures? How do you price stuff? How do you how do you negotiate with people who come and try and buy your stuff? Well, you know what? Right now, with all the internet, I mean, you can walk in. I mean, we got a warehouse full of stuff, and I'm selling a product. People go, you need it on the iPhone, and you already know what the thing's worth. Right. Google so, it. Exactly. Oh. But you never know, because there's still treasures. I mean, there's still stuff out there. But I mean, I think if you're going in to buy something, especially like at a garage sale, you know, they always say no early birds. Well, Everybody the opposite. Early. Yeah. Early. Everybody Try the day goes. before. You know, that always works. That's right. Yeah. If you say your yard sale starts at 10, prepare for people to show up at 8 o'clock and negotiate that deal. Don't mark things up high. Negotiate them up high. Oh, right? yeah. There you go. Jeff Schwartz, The Liquidator, uh, season three coming to you. You're going to China. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you got so much going on through the United States. You got to tune into this program. It's addictive, Russell Kate. It's it, addictive. It is. Yeah, I love Jeff. Yeah, I'm so glad you're in the studio today. It's great to, great to have you on the show.